Welcome, I am Guy Valente and this is the Valente Brothers TV 2022. I am here with Pedro Valente. Thank you for being with us once again. And the great Joaquim Valente. Hello everyone, very happy to be here. Happy 2022. So once again, we would like all of you to help share this video, like this video, support Valente Brothers, spread the message. Today we're going to talk about possibly one of the most important topics uh, we've ever covered in our podcasts. The connection between nutrition and jiu-jitsu. It is a historical connection, right, Professor Pedro? No question. I have a book here by Mitsu Maeda, who brought jiu-jitsu to Brazil. Not the first one, but I would say the most important Japanese practitioner to come to Brazil in the beginning of the 20th century. And in his book, this book was actually written before he arrived in Brazil, around 1907, in El Salvador. And in the book, he dedicates a big section to health, to the preservation of health. And in his understanding, self-defense against the invisible enemy, which is the bad habits that will lead to, to a bad health, that self-defense is more important than self-defense against a person who might assault you in the street. And he considers these health practices to be part of jiu-jitsu. In fact, when jiu-jitsu first arrived in the Western world, the, 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 the London Medical Journal actually wrote, there was a piece that was published in the London Medical Journey, Journal in 1906 talking about how the Japanese, not only nutritional practices, but their health practices in general, hygiene, the consumption of water, exercise, sunbathing, and all of that, how it impacted their health and, and the benefits that this jiu-jitsu philosophy could have in the Western world, not just for self-defense, physical self-defense, but also for, the, main, for the, the preservation of our physical health. Yeah, we don't know exactly the connection between what we now read in Maeda's book and Carlos Gracie, but we definitely have to, to pay tribute to Grandmaster Carlos Gracie, of course, Grandmaster Hélio Gracie, who was the one that taught us, but of course we know the amazing uh, influence Grandmaster Carlos Gracie had, and our father, of course, even working together with our father, who was a medical doctor, and many times also contributed to some of the research and the findings of Carlos Gracie. But we don't know exactly, at least we never heard, that there was a, a influence coming from Maeda in this respect as well. But I think that it's a very reasonable assumption, given that Carlos was Maeda's student, was training at Maeda's school in the north of Brazil, and Maeda thought that this was so important. I think it's a, re it's a reasonable assumption that Carlos was at least inspired by, by Maeda's um, philosophy when it came to, to health. Joaquin, did you ever notice any type of influence coming from the Japanese in, regar in regards to the diet? Not really. I did not. But after finding out the, uh, the, the importance that Mitsu Maeda gave, I would agree with Professor Pedro that for sure there was an influence. And let me just read... Because, sorry to interrupt you, it's not automatic. In many martial arts, many martial artists... Uh, often don't really pay attention to nutrition, possibly as a necessity for training, for competition, but not really the lifestyle changes. And that's something very particular and something that we have to be, as I said, very grateful for Grandmaster Carlos and Helio's attention to that aspect, which is, like I said, so important. Yes, because many times when people think about self-defense, they only think about someone who would assault you in a street fight. But they don't. They don't have a global, an, a, a universal, an approach. universal approach to self, or a holistic, a holistic. But that universal or holistic approach sometimes takes time. I, you know, in a school like ours today, where we have such of an organized system, 
with the 753 code, I still feel that sometimes someone that comes into the school more for the physical aspect, right? People join the jiu-jitsu school for different reasons. Some want, they went through a traumatic situation. They want to learn how to defend themselves. Others are trying to improve their health. Others are looking for exercise. So someone that comes more for the physical side of jiu-jitsu, it might take them five, six years for them to finally say, you know what, now I'm interested. I wanted to start finding out more about how, the way you guys eat and, and the nutritional side. Sometimes even longer. Sometimes even longer, right? I think more and more because of the 753 code, people are finding out earlier, which is good. But Carlos Gracie trained for how long there, Professor Gee? Well, with or at Mitsu Maeda's school, um, maybe two, three years at the most. Correct. So, you know, I, I understand what Professor Gee is saying, that it takes time and, you know, we're not 100% sure that... That's that why it, I use the word inspired. Exactly. Yeah, I think inspiring is a good word. And, and, there, and there's no doubt that when Grandmaster Carlos Gracie went to Rio, he studied through many other sources and he just became very um, very interested in this subject and he dedicated himself tremendously to the study of nutrition and health in general. And he was connected with other students of Mitsu Maeda that were training for longer than him, correct? I don't know if, yes, uh, Jacinto Ferro, who was one of his teachers in Belém do Pará, was trained I mean, for longer than him. I mean, in Rio, afterwards. I don't know if Donato Pires dos Reis trained longer than him. Okay. I'm not sure. Could be. Could be. Now, still talking about the history and the connection between jiu-jitsu and um, nutrition, even before that, if we talk about the samurai, we have had access to different publications I can see that you're trying to find something in our library behind us. Yes, right there. If you turn around, Yoku Jun, it's right here. Yes. Just so I can give credit to the writer and I can be precise with the information. Go to your right, to your right, keep going. No, to this side here. Yes, keep going. Yoku Jun, right there. Right there. Go left a little bit. Yo, yes. That's a classic one. Yoku Jin. You want to look for it? Yes. So the name of the writer is Kaibara Ekiken. He was a samurai doctor. And it's ama it says, Yoku Jun, Yo, Yo Jokun, Life Lessons from a Samurai. And he was a samurai, but he was a samurai doctor. His specialty was um, our father really medicine. liked this passage no yes and he really liked the, 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 the this book and he um and i'm just looking for the date exactly when it was uh published but the whole book is about health and nutrition and it connects as you said the samurai and how the samurai they believed even in food combining um in food selection in many of the the, the precepts that we follow today the samurai also believed in them. A very, a very complete hygienical approach. Correct. Talking about bathing and... Yes, 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 yes. And um, if we continue, I will eventually find... I just want to share um, when the book was written precisely. I believe it was in the 16th century. So we're talking about the 1500s. And it's amazing to see how at that time they were already focusing on the preservation of health and that's and how that is so connected yeah um to and i think what you samurais. touched on as far as our responsibility and as far as the necessity to defend ourselves when it comes to what we eat when it comes to the physical aspect maybe you can call it internal the internal threats of course, it comes also from what you eat. It comes yeah. from the outside as well. But how it impacts your body internally. Yes. And I believe that that's a, a responsibility we have. Some can interpret it in religious ways. Others in just ethical ways. However, the body that we have today is something that we must protect. And without that, we will never be able to defend ourselves Correct. from those uh, external forces, right? In a fight or in a confrontation, in a surprise attack, in any situation. So Grandmaster Edu talked a lot about that 
And I think that's one of the reasons why it is so connected. Because we know the importance, even for the military, anyone who's going to have to face a challenge, an imminent threat, if that person is not well physically, if they're not eating something that's giving them at least fuel, they're going to be in trouble. I agree. And I think another point that connects so much to the art that we practice is the idea of maximum efficiency. Because when you're looking for maximum efficiency to be able to face an opponent, that maximum efficiency has to be a concept that is practiced every day in your life. I think it's very hard for you to be able to apply maximum efficiency to one specific area and for you to be inefficient in all different areas of life. And uh, that's a great thing about the 753 code because we have exercise, we have nutrition, we have sleep, you have hygiene. And in all of those, when you apply the idea of maximum efficiency, you're going to be able to see a constant evolvement on your abilities, which will equal an evolution on your health over a certain period of time. I think that's the, the I wouldn't say a problem, but something that's important to understand that the concept of health is not a destination. You have to constantly be looking on ways to improve. And I think we're a great example of that because many times when we talk to students, they say, oh, you guys grew up like that, so it's easy for you guys. But if you look, we have made so many changes. And, and many of those changes were not easy on, on, on changing the way we eat on, because we have new information or, or things that we believe that could improve our health. And, that, uh, and those changes require... Uh, willpower, it requires you to continuously repeat that until... Yeah, developing a habit. Develop a habit. And you said willpower, something our father used to always um, mention whenever there was a discussion about what's more important, willpower, or he used to refer to as controlled imagination. He believed that that was so important when making these lifestyle changes. Believe in what you're doing through understanding and visualizing the rewards really look at how this will impact or how this will impact your life in a positive way see that result imagine that result and through that the path towards it becomes easier and this controlled imagination that you described so well i think plays so such of an important role in acting by anticipation so many people wait for themselves to be in trouble, to have you know, a disease or even a disease in the family for them to start to change. But why not change early? Why not change while you still have your health in a good condition by using controlled imagination so that you don't allow your body to be in a bad situation, right? And if we have, and today through studies and, and, and books, and you know, it's proved that stress and uh, so many other things, eating, you know, having bad habits with your nutrition will cause problems to your body. That means that eating healthy, not being able to learn how to deal with stress, being happy, having gratitude and such other values that are so important are going to help for you to be able to live a very healthy lifestyle. So by controlled imagination, being able to have those things, you will avoid finding yourself in a situation that now you have to change, not by option, but by necessity. And we can talk about the different aspects that impact us physically. Of course, everything is connected emotionally, mentally as well. You touched on, on, on sleep. You touched on exercise. Following the 7553 code addresses all of that. However, oftentimes individuals try to rank which one of these is more important. Even when it comes to jujitsu, sometimes we... We, we, um, we've heard this before. Oh, jujitsu is more important. Uh, nutrition is more important. We see this all as part of jujitsu, right? You guys agree? 100%. Now, when it comes to, okay, what's more important? Eating right or exercising? Sleeping or being very hygienical? Or and, positivity. Or having, yeah, a positive mental attitude. I also believe they are equal. Right? The other day I saw a video on YouTube, of course, a, a clickbait tactic saying sleep is more important than nutrition. Well, if you don't eat right, 
you'll have a hard time sleeping. Correct. And, and that's, I, don't, I wouldn't even say that they're equal. I would say that they're dependent on each other. So you cannot choose. They're connected. Yes. They're all connected. And so one without the other is not going to be able to, to work as you would want it to work. And as Joaquin mentioned, the concept of maximum efficiency. You're looking for the best outcome. That's what we learn in jiu-jitsu. You're always trying to find the best way to do everything you do. You don't compromise for mediocrity. You, you, you're always in search for excellence. And why not apply that concept to how you eat, to how you sleep, to how you, to how you exercise, and to all the other factors that will enhance your health and allow you to defend yourself against different types of enemies, including pathologies such as viruses and bacterial infections and, and diseases of the sort. Well, you'd like to make Just a point? I was going to make a point, and I think that this is very interesting because it's a balance that many times people have a hard time with when compared to work. You see people that have such good work ethics and they find that ability to look for the maximum efficiency in their job, running a, a, a corporation, a company, whatever the job is, doesn't matter. But then when they get off the job, that maximum efficiency is not applied in their personal life. And the same standard and the same regard that they have for the maximum efficiency to their job is not you know, applied the same way. So it's interesting how I think that being able to find that balance, and that's why we spoke about the little things, right? Finding the, the maximum efficiency in the little things becomes a habit that allows you to be able to apply it in an even more efficient way. But is it just maximum efficiency that you're referring to or it's also a pursuit to perfection? Because you can be efficient. Can you? My question is, could you be efficient and still do something that, for example, or eat something that's unhealthy? You could be efficient with your meal and still be unhealthy. Depends on how you define efficiency exactly. because we're looking for efficiency in the sense of the best result with the minimum energy. So best result when it comes to health is... Maximizing your health. Maximizing your health. So it's excellence in the way you eat. So but I understand Guy's question is, you know, someone could interpret maximum efficiency, sure. for example, is what can I eat that's going to give yeah, me I'm gonna eat the most power? Fast food. For it depends me. on what your objective is to achieve exactly. that maximum, exactly. maximum efficiency for what? So I think we're talking about, I think I liked what you said, excellence. Right? Pursuit of excellence. Pursuit, yeah. Always for health. Trying for health, like you said, if you're going to be that in your company, at your work, if you want to be the best uh, painter in the world, why not apply that same attitude to your health to have the best health in the world exactly. as an objective right people usually don't do that and what's more important than health it doesn't really make sense but the thing is that society does not teach us the importance of health because we are a product of our environment and our society and, and it is not a popular idea that you should do everything you can to maximize your health what's in vogue what people really talk about is you should always use moderation, instant gratification is important, pleasure. As long as you don't exaggerate, it's not going to hurt you. And the idea of being, you know, of trying your best to be healthy is almost seen as a radical idea. Oh, you're too extreme, you're too radical, it's not good. So you believe in a more hedonistic approach? Hedon not that hedonistic approach to life? Not that you believe, but that's really what, like you said, in, it's more in vogue? Yes, for sure, no question. Because as Joaquin said, it's all about your habits, right? Let's talk about Lao Tzu who wrote the Tao Te Ching, which is a base of jiu-jitsu and the philosophy of jiu-jitsu. He says, very famous quote, watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character, because they become your destiny. And that's a, a quote by... Heraclitus, Heraclitus, 
Greek philosopher that our father would always repeat, a man's character is his fate. So we connect in our philosophy the way we eat and the way we treat ourselves with our identity and with our character. It's part of self-respect. Are we perfect? No. But we feel that our philosophy is different than most people's philosophy in the sense that we believe that we should always work hard to do everything we can to strengthen our health. Even if that means that we're not going to enjoy a certain food as much. Obviously, we always look for tasty foods and we, we believe it's totally possible to eat in a healthy way and to still be, to still enjoy food. But as Grandmaster Elio would say, if you give me the most repulsive food in the world that tastes terrible, but you tell me that's very good for, for, you, for you, I'll have it. But, but, I, if you, but if you give me a food that is the most tasty food in the world and say, that's not good for you, I don't want it, I'm not going to have it. I, I, I understand exactly what you're saying, but I think that sometimes when you hear this approach, one from the outside believes that we don't have pleasure in what we eat. As I said. And I think that we have more pleasure than people usually that are eating unhealthy foods. Because, and I think, you know, you explained that so well, and, and so it's a question for you to talk about taste and how taste is something that you can train and develop, right? Number one. But then second, I think that when you're having pleasure upon something that you actually know that it's good for you and that it's increasing your health, right? It's making you more healthy. Then I think your pleasure gets becomes even more uh, real than when you're doing something and inside of you, you know that it's unhealthy for your body, for your mind. What if you don't know? Well, then Grandmaster Elias would talk about ignorance. And that it was better, actually. Yeah. Or less worse. <laughs> Yeah, because when you know that you're doing something that is unhealthy and you choose to do it to continue in that path... You pay two times, he used to say. <laughs> exactly. But let's, let's discuss... Your punishment it. comes doubled. Yeah, I, I, I agree with what you said completely, Joaquin. And I do believe that we find more pleasure in our foods, in our healthy foods, than someone who eats junk and and thinks that they are enjoying the food. I, I agree with that. However, don't you think as a concept, it is important for us to put health above pleasure? That if I have to choose one or the other, I will always side with health. Because sometimes you might, especially people who grew up eating other types of foods that they really enjoy, I might have to say, look, I know you enjoy that, but it's not good for you, so don't have it. Cut it. Never eat that again. No, My son, for example. I understand the concept, and I think the concept is extremely important. And I think the concept is the base of people being able to change and being able to improve. But I believe that it's just important for us to, to explain that when you eat this way as a, um, as a habit, and you eat this way as really a way of life, it's different than someone that eats healthy just with the intention of being able to eat healthy. And I think that's the biggest change, uh, the biggest difference that I see when talking to someone that eats you know, healthy from Monday through Saturday and then Sunday they have their cheat day because there's no pleasure in the way that they eat, that they have their lunch on a Monday or on a Tuesday or on a Wednesday or on a Thursday, right? Because the only way they find pleasure is the day that they're eating something that actually they think that feels good for them. That's but hold very, on. That's very important. But I would like to hear what you were going to say about your son because I think the key to this is education. The and future generation. Upbringing, yes. Yes. So sometimes I will give my son something to eat or drink that is good for him. And he says, I don't like it. And I already teach him, I said, I understand you don't like it, but it's good for you. So have it. You can do it. Let's see if you can do it. If you're strong enough to eat something that you don't like, to drink something that you don't like. I know you don't like the taste, but let's go. Like a test. Like a, 
to test your mental strength. He's five years old, and I'm already training him in that way. So he, he understands that sometimes we have to do things that we don't like. But eventually he will like and he will find pleasure in 100%. that. 100%, yes. Habit, the taste buds are trainable. Yeah, some foods yeah. I never liked, but it's okay. But you still have them, <laughs> if they're good for you or no. Of course. But that's the point. <laughs> yeah. That's the point. So the thing is that I, I think, Joaquin, and I'm not disagreeing with you because I always, and I even think for your health, it's, you should eat things that you like. When you're eating a food that you don't like, it might not even benefit you so much. So I'm agreeing with you. However, I think it's so important to teach people this concept that sometimes in life you have to do things that you don't want. Sometimes in life you have to do things that you don't like. You can't choose what you do based on pleasure. You have to do, choose things based on what is right. Are we going and back then to the, to the word? In Portuguese, I think it's hedonismo. Hedonism. In English, no, in Portuguese it's hedonismo. Uh -huh, yes. The H is silent. And in English, it's hedonism. 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 Maybe share... Um, a little bit about what that is. Hedonism is a Greek concept is a, where, where the purpose of life is to seek pleasure, immediate pleasure. So you look for pleasure in everything you do and you indulge your senses in order to, to find happiness. Right? And, and that is opposite to the Stoic philosophy which is based on living your life for honor, to, to, for your legacy, to do what you believe is right, based on morals. Obviously, both, in the end, seek happiness. But the Stoics understand that you cannot have happiness all the time. That's not life. That's not the human experience. Sometimes you feel happy, and that's great, but sometimes you don't. And learning how to deal with that Dealing with moments where you don't have pleasure. Understanding that in life you have to do things that are not going to bring you satisfaction. Because that's where I think a lot of people have trouble. Especially now, in, in, our, in our society. People have trouble because they cannot be contradicted. They cannot be in feeling in situations where they're suffering. They panic. And they look for quick fixes. Bailouts. They look for bailouts, yes. And I think that when we talk about nutrition... I think that's a huge topic. Many times, we going back to what I um, shared as far as my father's main advice to help us make lifestyle changes, controlled imagination, thinking of the benefits that that change will make, will provide you in the future. Many times, we also have to think, and it's normal to do that. You shouldn't have guilt. You shouldn't have fear. But it's okay to to think of the consequences if you don't make those changes. Correct. It's natural. Well, if I continue in this path of unhealthiness, there is a chance I might develop a disease. There's a chance that my immune system will be weaker. Doctors will tell you that, yeah. hopefully. And the issue is understanding how to, to balance how much energy and how much you want really to focus on um, yourself, like Joaquin said, before having the problem, anticipating the many problems that can happen and not developing a huge debt because one day you're going to have to pay that debt. Correct. And that's what it's all about. As Grandmaster Eddie used to say, the bill always comes in the end. There's an, an essay by Ralph, uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson that I really like called Compensation. Yeah. And that essay describes this. There's no way, you know, you're going to look for pleasure and you're going to indulge yourself in all those tasty things of life. You're going to pay the price later. But well, There's no way out. There is a bailout nowadays. You can take a, a little pill that will save you. There is med uh, you know, we come from... Three generations of doctors in our family. Great-grandfather, grandfather, and father. So we have the utmost respect for the medical profession and all the wonderful... Um, life-saving. Life-saving medicines and ther therapies that have been developed. So we are the first ones to defend medicine and the power of medicine. However, medicine has not yet created a pill that you can take that will allow you to indulge in all these 
pleasures, or I would call them false pleasures, instant pleasures that will hurt you in the end, without a price. That pill doesn't exist. I take that pill and now I can eat whatever I want, I can drink whatever I want, I can live life in an irrational way, and I'm going to be healthy. That pill doesn't exist. Maybe short term. No, the, that pill doesn't exist. I'm, talk, I'm talking about a pill that you take before. It doesn't exist. So once you indulge in all those pleasures and you start feeling the consequences, then you're going to have pills. Yeah, there are pills that, may, that might short, that might uh, prolong. That yeah, might, that, might pro, that might mask, mask. the pain. And might even fix some of the issues. But at what if, cost? If, if, at what cost? And also, if medicine had solved that problem, why do we have so much obesity in our society more than before? If medicine had solved the problem of health, why do we have so much diabetes in our society more than before? And even mental health issues, anxiety, depression, these are all on the rise. So we have not, as a society, improved on that specific, on those specific fronts that I'm describing. We have improved on many. Yeah. Fighting infectious diseases, bacterial infections, and others have improved. Have we improved no in fighting infectious oh, many. diseases? Oh, for sure. Think about uh, penicillin and the, 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 the but antibiotic. Uh, what, but there with was, a bailout No, the strategy? antibiotic. The antibiotic can co kill bacteria that before would, people would die from typhoid fever. People of would course. die from, from tuberculosis. So, but the question that he has is, has it improved in the sense that we are living a healthier lifestyle to be able to really fight those conditions and, the, and those bacteria and those viruses? No, our or, health? Or, do we, or the medical field has improved to be able to fight that when the necessity shows up? That's exactly the point. Medicine. Of course, hygienically, we've made improvements too in, mm -hmm. in, in, in other aspects like exercise, um, some individuals at least. I don't know the numbers as far as... Uh, as uh, as an average for society. But I think Joaquin's question is exactly what I had in mind. And it's a very difficult topic. I don't know the answer for that. But if you don't mind sharing some of your no, my thoughts. Point, my point is this. There's no pill that will allow you to live an unhealthy life and be okay in the end. That doesn't exist. Medicine is amazing. And it can help you in many ways. But it doesn't help you in the sense that you're not going to pay the price for your indulgences. Yes, we understood that. I think that part is very clear. I think what Guy asked, and I think based on what you said, I know the answer, so I'm going to ask the question and the answer, is have we improved the society on being able to fight bacteria? And if the answer that you gave is that no, people, there's more obesity, there's more... Uh, That's not bacteria. No, hold on. No, no, but I'm just saying, if there's more, if we're unhealthier today, that means that we have actually... Uh, regressed. gone back huh? regressed regressed on the ability for us to have a strong immune system to fight bacteria yes no I know but we were talking about medicine that we were talking about the no I know it's just yeah. the way that you said it it made it seem like today we're more prepared to be able to fight bacteria on the medical field exactly <laughs> that was the point but based on health we're not based on health we're not and, and exactly. but we haven't made that connection yet so let's make that connection that you're looking for right now which is we have something, we are designed to be able to fight diseases, pathogens. Bacteria, viruses. Bacteria, viruses. We are designed to be able to fight these off by something called our immune system. And let me just make a quick disclaimer. As most of you know, we're not medical doctors. And in this episode, we are not giving anyone medical advice. We're just sharing with all of you what works for us and also our findings. Just to make that clear. That's very important. No medical advice here. So, we believe that if we, and there are many different ways to call it, both Kaibara Ekiken in his book, and Kaibara Ekiken, he lived from 1630 to 1714, 84 years at that time was amazing. And I really like to see that, like Elio Gracie, he talked his whole life about health. He went to 95 years old. Oh, hold on, but I know this guy that was drinking, smoking, and he lived until he was 100. Yes, but the point is that that is an outlier. 
right? If you understand the bell curve, <laughs> you always have outliers. But most I just people, wanted to throw I that because we always hear something like but that. But most people who drink and smoke, they die earlier and they get sick. Because it's not only about living a long life. Elio Gracie was 95, but he was coming here, traveling by himself, well, jumping in the ocean, running, doing jiu-jitsu in his 90s. And so it's different. 100% and whoever met Elio Gracie could attest to that. And I think that at the current moment... Uh, we've had, unfortunately, we've had um, a huge um, example, really, to help us understand this concept. Everything that we've been going through for the last two years, mm -hmm. I think that many times, and we understand why sometimes practically there isn't really a difference. We're all human beings. We're all in the same boat. Uh, we're all responsible. Actually, we've been finding out that we're all responsible in some way for each other. Um, and I think health-wise, the decisions you, you make every day about what you eat and exercise and, and, and your health overall can impact others in direct and indirect ways. We've been finding out how that can, can happen. Um, but when it, comes to, when it comes to society and when it comes to the decisions we make, this is so important. So I interrupted you, but I just wanted to make that quick comment. Perfect. And what I was saying was that we have an immune system. And that immune system, the health of that immune system, the ability of that immune system to work efficiently is based on our choices. Our nutrition, our exercise, our sunbathing, fresh air, hygiene, our positive mindset, all these elements, the amount of our rest, sleep, all of that is going to have a direct impact on our immune system and our ability to fight off disease without the help of medicine. Because the less we take care of ourselves, the more we need medicine. For example, most people who are older, you open their bathroom cabinet and you will find a lot of pills. I wouldn't say just older. Correct. If we, we, we were in Elio Grace's house so much and we used to, as kids, go to his bathroom. And I remember opening his cabinet when he was in his 80s and I only saw a toothpaste, a toothbrush, his shaving stuff. That's it. He didn't take medicine. How many times, Elio Grace lived 95 years. How many times he went to the doctor? Our father was his doctor. Actually, what about how many times he went to the hospital? Yeah. So if everybody lived like that, what would happen to our healthcare system in a good way? So should we mandate healthiness? No, it doesn't healthy work. Healthy lifestyle? It doesn't work. The government cannot Should we do stop that. people from drinking, smoking, it's eating not work. sugary foods? No, we have to educate so people make better choices. But what about a mandate? Passport? It doesn't work. People are free. People need to make their own decisions. You sure? believe in freedom. But that impacts... There's a harm theory. But it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. You cannot have... Uh, Should we make a central management of society where they're what about mandating 15 minutes of, <laughs> of, exercise. <laughs> of exercise every day? Should we do that? It doesn't work, but it could help society. I don't think so. I think it's more important instead of mandating is to understand, and, and this it could go into a whole new discussion, which I think we shouldn't go there, but to see why people are not being motivated and inspired to go in this path. Correct. Hold on, were we? That's it. Did our parents mandate certain things in our home? I never felt it was a, a mandate, even though um, it was, but it, our father never made it feel that way. And the point is that in the family, I think within each family, for families to make decisions, that's one thing. For the government to decide for you what's... Because what if they tell you that you should eat meat every day because somebody in the government, some scientist, believes that eating red meat... Three times a day is the healthiest way to go, the carnivore diet, and forces you to do that. That would be nice, Ricky. Some people like it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing, you know, we need to be, make our choices based on our beliefs and our research and what yeah, we Of course. And, and for this, you have to be able to critical think, you have to be able to yes. study, you have Correct. to be able yeah. to read. And, and I think that's one of the things that I always tell students is, you know, your ability to critical think is really what's going to make you be able to improve. Because on the end of the day, you know, what's right for us, maybe it's not right for someone someone else. Correct. We might think it is, 
but they have to be able to come to those conclusions by themselves and to really be inspired. I think the word inspired they used is so important because yes. when you're inspired, you're going to be able to continue your improvement for a long period of time. We see, and I think we, I think this is something important for us to touch on. We have seen people that have joined the school, that have trained for a while, that appeared to be inspired to change, and maybe in, in that short period of time they were, they changed, but then one day they went back to their old habits. And by going back to the old habits, it actually worked against them, not only health-wise, but even psychologically, Correct. for them to be able to continue their journey in the other aspects of jujitsu. And it hurt them so much, in our opinion. So I think that when you, when you choose to go in the path of change and being able to improve your health, it has to be something that's done very conscious, that you really think in every step through. And sometimes it's better if it, take, if it takes longer. Yes. I know that, you know, as professors, we want people to be able to make that change and we want people to be able to, you know, stop and letting go of bad habits. But I believe that sometimes if they're inspired and they go step by step, and after a period of five, six, ten years, you see that curve gradually going up in their health, that's really the way that is going to stay for a long period of time. Yes. Should we, I think we can discuss our observations in the last two years with this pandemic, this COVID-19 pandemic. Because in the beginning, many people were saying, well, it's genetic, you, no one knows what causes one person to die and another person to live. And we have observed that that's not the case. That comorbidities, that obesity, that diabetes, that all these elements play a huge role in someone's ability to resist, to fight off the disease, or not. Um, I have a question. I don't know if you guys know the answer. I'm just asking a question. And we know that athletes, being an athlete doesn't mean that you're healthy. A lot of athletes are engaged in many self-destructive habits. But let's think about America and the main sports in America. How many NBA players died of COVID-19 that you know of? I'm not aware of one. NFL. There's some heavy players, but I'm also, if there was one, I'm not aware of. Major League Baseball. Also not aware of. We're from Brazil. Um, soccer, the division. the Active players? Yes. First and second division. I'm, I, I, I would almost say certainly that. Zero? Yeah. I, I, I could be wrong, but I don't recall. But, Guy, I also know that you like European soccer. Germany, the first division. How many died? Recently, there have been some players with um, some issues, but um, in relation directly to, to catching COVID, I would say zero as well. You know anything about the Italian, the French, the English Premier League? No. Zero. Actually, I was a little curious about this. It's, it's interesting you're, you're asking these questions. And I love sports. And active athletes, there was one active athlete that passed away from COVID that I know of. And uh, he was a sumo fighter from Japan in actually early, I think, 2020 or mid-2020, but he was diabetic. Mm -hmm. And Sumo, of course, yes. he was very overweight and he was diabetic and he, he caught COVID and uh, probably as a consequence of both his diabetes and COVID, he, he passed away. And let me tell you something. I didn't expect this to be like this way because, number one, you always have outliers. You know, you can be walking in the street and a, and a coconut falls in your head and you die. So you always have outliers. It's incredible that you don't even have one. But what's your point? My point is that the healthier you are, the better chance you have to fight off COVID-19, as well as any other disease. I understand. Yes, that's true. That's the point. So people are afraid when they are unhealthy. 
Isn't it smart to be healthy so you don't have to be so scared of diseases, whatever they might be? What's worse than being sick, seriously ill? What's worse than that? But what about someone that will say, well, you know, I know that he very healthy person that is in the hospital and... But that's why I was asking all these questions, isn't it? Always you're going to have outliers, but how do you know that person is really healthy? What does that mean? What's their level of consumption of alcohol? Well, What's their level of consum consumption of refined sugar, tobacco, illegal drugs, fried foods? How, much, how often do they eat fried foods, with, especially with vegetable oils and seed oils, which we know are super unhealthy? Industrialized packaged foods. How do we yeah, know? And feeling good. One time I, I talked about this in an interview. Feeling good and looking good, feeling good and looking good are two completely different um, things. And some people might even feel good when they're young, but already yeah. the destructive process has not yet manifested. So your point, your, your objective through these questions is really motivation. 100%. You, you want to motivate all of us and understand how we have something that we can do. It's in our hands. And it doesn't necessarily need to be, needs to be something that you, uh, a medication, a pill. It's something that you can do through a lifestyle change. Yeah. And there are no guarantees. And we sure. can talk a little bit about the, the stoic approach again. Yes. We have to understand stoicism that there are no guarantees and you have to be okay with that in life. Uh, life is really about instability. Yes. The moment that there's no more instability, there's no more life. Uh, that's when you're dead. So, and that's also very deep. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but that's really the key. Am I right? You're absolutely right. And I believe that we have to take advantage of this opportunity where people are really worried about their health. But we must bring common sense back to the conversation. Well, the let reason... Me, let, me just, let me just make this point. Yeah. Because why is common sense lacking? And I feel very comfortable to say this because in our school, we were very strict with the protocols to protect our students against COVID-19, including masks, hygiene, and everything. We were very, very much on top of making sure that people felt safe in our school. So I'm very comfortable with this. But to me, it's a lack of common sense when someone is so worried about a mask, so worried about hand sanitizer, but eating a chocolate ice cream, smoking cigarettes, and drinking whiskey. Yeah, one of our students actually shared a story um, from CVS, <laughs> a drugstore, and she was waiting to, to on the, at the cash register, and she saw a, an, an older man grab a pack of cigarettes, and as he grabbed the pack of cigarettes, he actually used some hand sanitizer that was available for the customers to clean the pack of cigarettes, clean, the, clean his hands and clean the pack of cigarettes. So he thinks that... It's better for his health to put hand sanitizer on the pack of cigarettes than to smoke the cigarette. No, See, but he thinks that if he's going to smoke, at least there's less risk that he's going <laughs> to get a bacteria. Sorry, to me that doesn't the make virus. sense. He's already smoking. <laughs> if he's smoking... Could be bacteria too. <laughs> if he's smoking, then what's the point? Yeah. And, what's and, the point? Yeah. He, you know, he doesn't care about his health. A person who smokes doesn't really care. Don't... don't Give me a break. You're going to put little hand no, sanitizer. No, but it's weakness, you know, No, I understand. Sure Sometimes it is. They, they care, but it's weakness, and I think that... And I think it's important they, to understand that, you know, part of the weakness is to, you know, when you're trying to help someone who has that weakness and is trying to come out of that, is to understand that that process is one in which the person sometimes <laughs> telling them that they're weak might not be the best Different things work for strategies. different strategies. strategies. No, the, but, but let me just say something yeah. real quick about that. Different strategies work for different people. Yeah. Maybe it's the way I was raised. But we all have bad habits in our life. It's important to say that. We're here. We're all weak. We're all weak. Yeah. Correct. And recently I, had, I was engaging in a habit that I felt was destructive to my health. 
And I've been thinking about it for a while. And recently I saw this podcast where this gentleman says, it's bad for you. There's no other way to look at it. Stop. Never do it again. I was like, I like that. Yeah, and that's why we're... I like that. And Pedro, that's why we're talking a little bit like this today in this podcast. Some of our friends and students might be even wondering, why are we talking a little bit? Usually we're very neutral and we're very... Um, we, we, we try to be very... Diplomatic. Uh, diplomatic in our approach. But you know what? Sometimes you need a little shock. Like our father used to say, he was a surgeon, and he said, sometimes you have to cut. Sometimes you have to cut. And you need a little... Uh, in Portuguese, you refer to as tratamento de choque. Yes. Yeah, a little shock, shock therapy. Shock therapy. And, and, and it works for us, too, sometimes. Yes. I, I remember uh, a while back, I wasn't feeling well. I think I, I had you know, sim uh, flu-like symptoms. And I called Pedro on the phone, and I said, you know, I have these symptoms, and you think I'm okay? Pedro said, believe in your immune system. You've been preparing for this all your life. While everybody was doing different things, you were being healthy. While everyone was drinking Coca-Cola, you weren't. You were drinking coconut water. While everyone was drinking a beer, you'll have, you were having your watermelon juice. If something happens to you, so be it. But you're prepared to go through it. So believe in yourself. You know you did everything you could. And that's a great feeling. The feeling of, you know what, I did my homework. I studied for the test. So now that I'm in here, in this classroom, and I have to take the test, I'm ready for it. The results are the results. That we can't control. But we can control what we do, how we prepare. Yeah. And I actually feel like even apologizing to anyone who's watching this video and feels like, oh, we've been maybe disrespectful calling someone who smokes weak or... No, that's not our intention. No. Those of you that know us know exactly what our intention is. Uh, and, by the way, we're not perfect. Correct. And we have shared this before in, our, in some of our podcasts. We also make mistakes. Like Joaquin said, we're also weak. We're also in the fight. We're also in the fight, but we want to stay in the fight. We want to stay fighting, and we don't want to give up. And I think that's really the lesson, uh, the most important lesson I learned from our father, even the last time he visited us, was don't give up, keep fighting. And this is really the, the, the message that we want to so give out in this, in this podcast. Based on this message. That we want to send. You know? And this is a conversation that I was having the other day. From all of the seven, which one is the most important one you'd say, and I know it's hard sometimes to separate them, for you to be able to apply this strategy? And this strategy, as I said earlier, can be applied, obviously, to nutrition, to all of the five, but also could be applied to everything in life. Courage. Exactly. And that's why Grandmaster Elio used to say that that's the most important virtue. Now, Pedro, let me also ask you this, because I know, again, Pedro is not a doctor, but he researches a lot like we do, uh, but he's a little ahead in his research. What about someone who has a condition like diabetes? They did not choose to be diabetic. They were born like this. Well, diabetes type 1 or type 2? Type 2, you're not born with it. Type 2, in my opinion, and I'm not a doctor, is based on lifestyle. Type 1, you were born with it, and you're going to do your best Sometimes based on what you develop you have. through childhood, maybe. Type 1. Based on, well, based on decisions. No, because diabetes, you have type 1, which I is, understand. Yeah. I'm talking about any condition. Okay. Right? Just to make it very simple for our audience. Mm -hmm. You develop any condition that at this moment is very dangerous, is life-threatening, but it's what, it wasn't really something that you did to yourself consciously. Sure. Let's say it happened to you at birth, or maybe it happened to you because of your, um, the brain. way you were raised and, yes. and the conditions that you were faced with. And how do you deal with that? Do you still believe that you have the, 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 the ability to fight the body has an amazing ability to recover and to transform itself. So if today you make a decision that you're going to change and that you're going to start only eating what you believe is healthy, 
that you're going to apply that mindset. I'm only going to eat what I believe is good for me and I'm going to eliminate everything else. I know it's hard. I know it takes mental courage, moral courage, but I will do it. Society, society teaches us that to be successful in business, we must have a mentality of excellence. We must eliminate bad habits. Why is it different when it comes to our health? Why, when it comes to our health, it's always about cheat days and moderation? You can have it as long as you control yourself. Why is it different? Why not have the same mentality? Let's work hard to eliminate bad habits and to be the best that we can possibly be. If it works in other areas, why not when it comes to our health? So we propose the same mentality of excellence, of only doing what you believe is right. And if you start today, your body will start transforming immediately. Within 24 hours, your body's already going to start changing. And you will improve from any condition that you have, I guarantee. You're going to feel better. Good. Very good. That's the attitude. And as we said earlier, that's really what worked for us. That's what we were taught in our family and, of course, through our contact and our you know, upbringing. And that's very important with men like our dad, but especially in this respect, Elio Grace, who was not born in his household. That's not how um, he grew up. But because of his brother and because of the belief he had in his brother and how that made sense for him, these teachings, he made a, you can call it radical, yeah. from the root. He made a change in his life and he taught by his example. And we learned through his life and until today that impacts us so much. And let me close with this. Because some people might be looking at us right now watching this podcast and thinking, yeah, that sounds great, but it's just too hard. This is too difficult for me. So let me say something that our father always told us. It's even in my yearbook, my high school yearbook. I quoted my father. He always said to me, if it's hard, I do it immediately. If it's impossible, it might take some time. So learn to enjoy challenges. And how do you do this step by step? Step by step, as Joaquin said earlier. Remember Lao Tzu's quote, watch your thoughts, start with your thoughts because they become your words. Your words become your actions and actions are choices. You need to make good decisions. That's where it all lies. I think the decisions are going to really, you're, you are a product of your choices. But continuing Lao Tzu, your actions become your habits. Your habits becomes your character. And your character becomes your destiny. And if you want to affect your destiny, your fate in a positive way, start thinking in a more healthy way and everything will continue from there. And also, very important, surround yourself with people who are in the same journey because they will inspire you we will inspire, you will inspire them. It's much more difficult to do it alone. Much better to do it as part of a community. And because we're all seeking happiness, I think that I was actually going to touch on that. You stole my, my <laughs> line, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. But the sense of uh, community, I think it's a very important element for you to have happiness, right? To feel that you belong in a community. In a the community, tribe, the tribe the that tribe. we talked about. Yes. And that you feel that... Everyone in that tribe, in that community, is on the same mission as you. Yes. So that's why finding and surrounding, surrounding yourself with people with the same beliefs, people that are looking to be able to improve your health, will always motivate you. I like to work out, but, you know, and I know some people like to work out by themselves, but when you work out with a group of people, it's always so much easier for me. So. Yeah, sometimes, you know, especially when it comes with your ch to your children, you're like, do this, do that. You know what's more important than that? Find people to be around your children that will inspire them exactly. to do the things you want yeah, to do. Yeah, and show them. Yes. Show them Through what example. you want. Yes. And that's the great thing, I think, of our youth program here in the school is that we use the older kids yes. right, to be able to help the younger kids. And okay. that gives a sense of empowerment 
to these older kids and that allows them to feel very special on being able to guide the younger ones in the same path of health, of self-defense, and everything that the Valente brother system has. Well, even though we should be ready and willing to continue moving forward, even if we are by ourselves, I believe that what you both said is key. Yeah. The sense of community, having people around you, is really, really important, and it can really make this mission uh, a little bit easier, just a little bit easier. But if no one is around, we keep going. I agree. If no one is around, you keep going, and you don't give up. Um, I also have to, to say that what Joaquin said really reminds me of how sometimes you feel like you are alone. But if you start... If you start living these principles, if you start making these changes, I don't know how to explain, but there is almost a magnetic field Law of attraction. that forms, Law of attraction. correct, that will bring people, Yes. or you will be also taken, it's just a form of, of a magnetic field is formed, like I said, and you will be connected to those that, that share these thoughts And it's just unbelievable. You can't really explain. Maybe some type of physic, <laughs> <laughs> physics world can. But um, just believe in it, stick to it, and keep fighting. Thank everything, you. Is, everything comes from the inside. Yes. Be the, be the change that you want to see in the world. Yeah, that's a nice quote. Good. So don't forget, like, subscribe, turn on the notification. Little, what is it, a bell? Yep. And also share, share once we publish this video, you can share it uh, with your friends and send us comments. Um, please, it's very important that you comment and that you like our video. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.